Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon and I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I'm joined by my esteemed co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry, and a very special guest, Riddle Singh. So today the uh, SEC wants freedom to experiment. Businesses can bank on blockchain, uh, institutions continue to buy BTC and more. Stick around to hear the news. Now, first off, Ricardo, Jerry, how are you guys doing this week? What have you been up to? I'm doing great. And uh, this week we've been working on getting some new gift cards for Columbia. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, and Jerry, what's up with you? Yeah, I've been crying this week. Uh, Bitcoin. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I know that we all feel the pain anyway. So it's been kind of a hard week. I'm like down. 20, 30 percent of my portfolio. Yeah. So it's been a really rough time. And yeah. with the baby crying. Yeah. It's been rough. You. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. down like twenty percent or something as well. And I panic and I panic sold at one point on one, I think it was Saturday. I sold, I sold the low yeah. on Saturday and then bought the high. It was the best, best trading I've ever done. Uh sorry I don't really trade either, but it was like stereotypical. But yeah, and for anyone who's listening only and not watching, I suggest you come and watch just for the ethereal lighting that is going on here for Jerry. He's looking angelic right now. Um, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, but yeah, I guess. And so, Riddle, um, before I ask you what's up and how you're doing, um, I'll give you a very quick, brief introduction to our audience listening. Um, Riddle is a colleague of ours at BitRefill, um, and being located in India, uh, he is our India ambassador. Um, so we'll be doing an interview with him later on in the podcast. Stick around for that. Um, but for now, um, how are you doing, uh, Riddle? And are you excited to be joining us on the pod today? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for having me, um, Lawrence, Ricardo, and Jerry. And I'm doing good. You know, well, pretty much trading this past week. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to mention there's being a dump in the portfolio as well. <laughs> it's all good we're all on a level playing field here it's all good everyone's everyone's uh slightly unhappy about it so <laughs> makes for easy uh easy listening but um okay well yeah so we'll move on first off to the news uh, i'm gonna start this week you know what i'm gonna start i'm gonna i'm gonna start with the piece of news i reckon it's gonna be less exciting than everyone else's so um i'm gonna get this out of the way first off um, but yeah, the piece of news that I've kind of chosen or, and, and found this week um, is in relation to the SEC. So it sounds boring in the first place, but um, it's basically it was SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce uh, calls for legal clarity and the freedom to experiment uh, for DeFi. Um, so with that, essentially, what I can see from the article, um, it's uh, the Block Crypto article um, that I read on it, um, and also from what I've heard from um, Pierce before, she seems pretty pro-crypto, uh, unlike the past uh, head of the SEC, um, Mr. Clayton. Um, and yeah, she's been quite pro-DeFi uh, and kind of wants, I think she wants to basically help make the regulatory environment so that centralized finance and decentralized finance is a level playing field, basically, uh, and then they can compete with each other. Um, now, to me, that sounds like the most positive thing out there, right? Like, um, you know, you can, people who are Ethereum fans and potentially Flare and Cardano, all these different uh, cryptos that claim you're going to be able to do DeFi are going to be pretty happy. But um, I didn't know kind of what you guys thought about this. Like, for example, I know, Ricardo, um, you're a bit more of a Bitcoin maxi. So uh, I just wanted to see, like, uh, I guess, whether this made any difference to your week or not, whether you think, yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm pumped for this, or whether you think, yeah, you know what, regulation is regulation. Um, you know, Bitcoin is is the way, and, and essentially there's no need for any of this because we've already got the perfect system set up um, with, with Bitcoin and, and crypto currently. Well, personally, I believe that DeFi should be allowed to experiment. Um, if you know me, you know I'm not really a fan of regulation. I think crypto was a lot cooler before um, exchanges started getting regulated and stuff. I like the scamminess of it. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I think they should be allowed to experiment. I, I support DeFi experimenting and you, there being more than one platform. Um, I prefer Bitcoin. I'm not going to buy any of these other coins, but um, they have a right to exist. Innovation is pro, yeah. I guess it's like you're saying, I suppose like the way I like to put it is that like I think of crypto as like the wild, wild west um, and I want it to kind of stay like the wild, wild west. So I kind of get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, what kind of, I suppose it comes to like what kind of regulations we could potentially 
see come into the space. I think it is, it's very much a pro thing. And I, and I suppose there's obviously the SEC investigation um, that's ongoing with uh, Ripple, um, which, yeah, you know, obviously is, it's kind of the hated by most of the crypto community, but at the end of the day, it's still a crypto. And that kind of shows an overall kind of negativity, in my opinion, um, from the SEC of the past. Um, but this kind of thing with Hester Pierce saying this, and then you've got the new um, guy coming in who, who who seems to be knowledgeable on blockchain uh, as taught courses in uni. I guess this seems to show like quite a positive uh, outlook for the blockchain and crypto spaces uh, in America. Um, but yeah, I guess, Jerry, have you got any thoughts on this at all? Or? Yeah, I, I do think the only positive coming out of this, the fact that we are seeing a much more um, enthusiastic or, you know, much more positive approach towards you know the way um towards the way that they view cryptocurrencies and blockchain and all that um, stuff. So for me, that's the only positive. I think right now we're seeing a bit more receptive approach towards you know cryptocurrencies. I think in the long run that would have a net positive you know um, effect on the industry. I do not believe that you know I do not think I do not you know I do not have any belief that you know DeFi would be become a thing. Uh, mainstream thing but i do think this opens up a pathway for mainstream adoption or it opens up you know you know lots of opportunities for cryptocurrencies in the space for you know genuine projects to actually flourish yeah so i think that's the only positive i know i take out of it riddle are you a defy guy or what's your what's your status here i guess well i am kind of i'm kind of with ricardo on this one <laughs> More on, more on the Bitcoin side. But uh, yeah, I do agree. I mean, experimentation, we should be open to experimentation though. But the thing I feel is the lack of understanding or basic, or, you know, just basic understanding about it. So when we talk about DeFi or, you know, all of these news coming up, he, um, well, for most of them, it's all about, you know, the price marginal. So it's like, hey, price is going down. Let's, it's a good opportunity to trade. And it, it's pretty much the hype, you know, when there was a DeFi wave and nobody really knew what it's happening. I mean, like, hey, do you, do you even understand the concept behind it? And they're like, ah, no, we don't know. It's, I know, I know this coin is going up, so I'm going to buy it. But uh, yeah, I mean, with the regulation in front of it. So if you know that something might be regulated, then there's a lot of news coming around it. It does open up, uh, you know, it brings up the educational front on it. I mean, you, get, at least, you at least get to read up on it, get to know what the concept is. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I say, I, I my, my opinion. The reason why I chose this was less, I guess, to discuss about it, but I just, I just wanted to see what you guys thought. But overall, I, I see it as positive news for the industry. Um, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, now, Ricardo, um, what's your uh, what's your piece of news to bring to us this week? My piece of news is uh, an article from Diginomica, which is called "Building a Bitcoin Based Business," and it's about a travel website called Travala.com. The travel sector was one of the hardest hit with the shutdowns and stuff from the pandemic over the last year. I think in the article, it says that the travel sector has declined 42%. But even with that taking place, this startup, Travala, has been profitable and um, has been expanding. And part of that is because they accept, uh, in addition to fiat, like 35 different cryptocurrencies, I think Binance invested in them, the article says, like Binance is a shareholder or a stakeholder in the company. And um, they use Binance for all their crypto transactions and they accept all these different cryptocurrencies. They use Binance to convert them to stable coins and they hold stable coins as like cash reserves, um, you know, for the cash flow and stuff. And uh, it's just a really interesting article because it kind of goes into depth on how they're adapting to incorporate uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies into their business model. So yeah, I thought it was a really good read. What do you guys think about businesses adopting Bitcoin uh, in this way? I love it, love it. Um, I also like the way that they're using USDT as their reserve because it's like, um, I know that, and I'm gonna potentially get this wrong, I think it's Liechtenstein, but one of the most pro um, crypto um, countries in the eu uh, you can create a business and actually back it with like, so obviously you have to show that you have some form of, of capital uh, and you can back it with like eth or any crypto um so you can effectively have a business with no bank whatsoever um and yeah uh, surely you can do this with this with this travel company right like surely you can have a situation where 
you receive crypto or you receive fiat that you instantly turn into crypto um, via Binance uh, or whatever gateway you're going to use. And then you can, yeah, essentially hold that cryptocurrency as a reserve, use it to come and go, spend and et cetera. And, and you're going to get, okay, you're going to get basically anyone who wants to buy a holiday with you, who wants to use fiat and has no idea about crypto, they still can great um and then you're also going to get the people who are you know into crypto who are going to be willing to maybe even pay more for their holiday because they can use crypto and support what they love they love so it's a it's a no-brainer win-win for me to be honest um so yeah love it love seeing all these crypto so all these companies adopt crypto uh, even if it's a gimmick i'm still up for it because why not they're, you know they're, they're they're trying something they're, they're they're trying something new that's my it's, opinion anyway an interesting point that the article brought up is that crypto people are like millennials uh, for the most part. So by focusing on um, like tech savvy customers that are, are crypto early adopters, um, they're basically like focusing on their target demographic, which is millennials who are the most likely uh, demographic to travel. Yeah, uh, I hadn't thought about that. That's quite clever, actually. Yeah, And to see a startup go from for well, starting up during the worst possible time for a travel company to start up in the last, I don't know how many years. Impressive. I like it. I think it's a fact that more companies should adopt. You know, I think Tesla has um, Tesla accepting Bitcoin is in the pipeline. I think more and more companies should do this. Um, as you can see, it for all the companies who've you know adopted Bitcoin so far, there's been a either you know adding Bitcoin to the balance sheet or accepting Bitcoin as a means of payment. It's you know it's been a net positive for you know all of them. I think um, companies should do more of th- more of this and. Uh, I mean, if we do see Bitcoin, you know, as a um, currency of the future, obviously, then this would be the most, um, the most obvious path to take, you know, do you, what do you guys think would be the disadvantage, you know, of, you know, adding cryptocurrencies um, like Bitcoin, you know, accepting Bitcoin, what do you think would be the possible, you know, um, cons? Yes, if you're a traditional business owner, and you have no understanding of the concept of cryptocurrency, or, or I, I guess it's potentially the worry that you're going to have customers who don't and maybe even see it as a negative. Like some people are very against cryptocurrency for whatever reason that I cannot understand. Usually those who are elderly, but others as well. Um, so they may then be like, oh, this company's accepting crypto. That's a scam. They're, they're supporting a scam, that kind of thing, right? Um, you're going to get some people like that. Um, so maybe that's the downside uh, and maybe it makes accounting slightly more complex. Um uh, but I think otherwise, it's just something that's new and a lot of people don't want to embrace what's new. I mean, look at Blockbuster, look at Kodak, look at all these companies that <laughs> didn't embrace technology and fell to the wayside. I it's see one of those things. regulatory risk as the biggest uh, negative because right now a lot of different countries don't have like a regulatory structure for accepting cryptocurrencies. And even in some countries, like it's prohibited. So just that the rules could change at any moment. And, and you have to think about the volatility. I think that is not a you know, major you know, scare for you know, business, business people, entrepreneurs who, you know, who, who I think they want to go into Bitcoin, but they always get like, oh, price always changing and stuff like that. I think if we have a mechanism that can you know, enable you know, seamless you know, you know, payments, you know, payments in Bitcoin and our cryptocurrencies, I think that would be a huge boost. I think um, Coinbase has something like that. I do not know how exactly it works, you know, for the merchants at the back end, but I think there's an instant conversion to fiat. So, but there's an issue of fees. So I think there's a whole, you know, myriad of issues that, you know, there needs to be sorted out before companies can fully embrace, you know, accepting Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies and the means of payment. Yeah, basically we can accept stable coins, right? The businesses. Yeah, so like removing the volatility kind of risk yeah. um, if you accept the stable yeah, coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like instant conversion into stable coins. Yeah, you're getting more fees maybe. But Okay, who's going to accept USDT? You know, there are some, you know, regulatory uncertainties regarding, you know, Tether, then, then the USDC, which, you know, it, that could, you know, bring up an you know, entire you know, bunch of issues on its own. Then I think, you know, stable coins, there hasn't been, there hasn't, I think the issue with stable coins at this point is no one, except you know, outside the you know crypto industry and the money the players in the industry, people don't don't really have that much faith in digitally you know pegged tokens. So I think there's still a way we have to go to a certain distance. We have to go before you know, people start accepting stable coins as or see still see stable coins as an equivalent to the USD mm. or other fiat currencies. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess with the Tether side of things, there was the news this week with um, Tether um, settling with uh, 
the uh, New York Attorney General. Uh, I think it was, I think, uh, maybe wrong, 18 million, 18.5 million, something like that, um, and didn't yeah. admit wrongdoing either, which is a massive victory for them to pay that kind of size fine and, and not have to uh, basically admit any wrongdoing, any liability, et cetera. So yeah, that was pretty encouraging, I guess, for the space and, and for the regulation around Tether as well. So we've uh, finished with uh, our news topic this week, uh, which is great. Uh, so we're going to move on now to my personal favorite part of the uh, podcast. Um, it's uh, the game section. Now I've got another new game for you all guys. Um, anyone listening, you know, you've had a new game every week, so you're, you're lucky. This week we've got a fill in the gap game. So what I'm going to do is I will be reading out some news headlines uh, and whoever buzzes in first can then fill in the blank section. So I'll say, for example, like blank uh, is a man or whatever. You know, that's not one, but blank is, and then you have to fill in whatever the blank is. Uh, If you're wrong, then uh, the other two of you have a chance to buzz in. And if you're wrong, Mm -hmm. then the last person can steal the points. Um, And obviously if it's really hard, then obviously we can, uh, you know, take some time or whatever now uh, i need each of you guys to come up with your own buzzer um you can just make uh, a sound so ricardo please can you give me your buzzer nice and simple uh riddle what is your buzzer let's just go with beep (laughs) beep that'll do so you've got beep and then jerry what's your buzzer nice i like it yeah very the classic Okay, right. So um, I've got five here, and I'm going to keep score and see who can get the most points. So the first news piece is blank, no longer the richest man after Tesla and Bitcoin slump. Elon Musk. Oh, like fire straight in. Okay, well done, Ricardo. That was an easy one. I'm warming you guys up a little bit. Okay, so one point to Ricardo. Uh, Number two, blank. Unfazed by Ethereum Chinese miner concerns. Vitalik. Brr, Vitalik. Yes, correct. <laughs> I love how you okay. <laughs> say it, then buzz it again. Yes, yeah, it is. Like, yes. Vitalik Buterin apparently is unfazed by uh, concerns around Chinese miner, which is fair enough. Basically, he's, un- he's unfazed about FUD, uh, is another way of putting that one. Um, Are they going to proof of stake? Like, why would he be concerned about miners? Precisely, <laughs> precisely. It's, the whole thing was just a bunch of rubbish. So whoever asked him that was, you know, I guess either didn't know what they're on about or were just trying to, I don't know, see if they could catch him out. Um, so it's 1-1 one, one at the moment. Uh, Riddle, you still have a chance to come in here and steal a victory, yeah. don't worry. Um, so number three. After banks and car makers, British blank adopts Bitcoin. <laughs> this one, I, I, I would never get this in a million years. So I just wanted to see what like, you could think of <laughs> <laughs> that would go in here. So I'll say it again. After banks and car makers, British blank adopts Bitcoin. So British what adopts Bitcoin? I can start giving clues in a minute, but I just want to see. I want to see if anyone can buzz in and give me the best shot here. <laughs> British yeah. hotels or tourism. No, but that, that was a sensible one. Th- we've got, okay, so <laughs> we've got to think a little bit more out there. Think tasty. Bakeries? Yes. Okay. Well. Okay. Right, I'll give I, mean, it. I didn't say beat. That's fine. No, right. no, it's fine. R- Riddle, Riddle didn't beat, but you are the guest, so I'm going to allow that to pass this time. It is bakeries. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Unbelievable. I didn't think anyone would get that. So yeah, after banks and car makers, British bakery adopts Bitcoin. Um, they think they might be the first bakery in the UK. Uh, this bakery. Uh, but yeah, essentially they adopted uh, Bitcoin purchases, which is awesome. Um, so I can go and pick up a cake if, whenever I'm near them when the lockdown lifts. Um, so we're all even. This is turning out to be more of a thriller than I had imagined. Uh, so even Stevens, everyone. Okay. We've got two more here, okay, guys. Um, so blank will not accept Bitcoin in offering plate. The Catholic Church. Oh, not not quite, but you're, you're nearly there. Nearly there. Okay, so church. Anglican. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Riddle, what's your knowledge of churches like and different sects of uh, Christianity? Because essentially, um, I'm just gonna go with the Vatican. <laughs> no, no, well, yeah, no. So, okay, no one's got it. All right, what? How can we? How can we make this fair? Well, we could just make the next one a t- the the final decision because we're all evens, right? Okay, yeah. So I'll give this one to you. It's the Russian Orthodox Church, um, ah, not the most ah, you know famous okay. church in in my parts, but yes, uh, the Russian Orthodox Church will not accept Bitcoin. Uh, in the offering plate. Now, my thought there is, 
yeah, they can't really, can they? Because you can't physically put it in the plate. Uh, and secondly, you know, their loss, uh, basically. If you don't accept free money, uh, okay. Sucks no to you QR guys. code in the offering plate? Well, yeah, you could. <laughs> yeah, just slip a little QR <laughs> down there. Uh, or you have like, here's the, here's the paper, paper wallet uh, for my wallet. And it has the crypto on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, okay. Next one, we have the tiebreaker. Okay, um, this is the final one for the prize this week, which is a smile. Um, so, Federal Reserve of Richmond hires self-described blank hacker. No, it's not anything rude because I thought I instantly went to rude, but it's not anything. Brr, rude. Blockchain expert. Oh yeah, no, I mean it's no, but like you're on the you're on the right path, so you, you may get some points here. Um, Riddle though, you've got a chance here. Take take a second, just think about this. Uh, what what's he going to refer to himself as here? Brr, blockchain analysis firm. Blockchain consultant. <laughs> no, see, we're all thinking too ah, professional. Right. Let's let's okay. get more casual. Let's get more casual. Say he's you know he's on Twitter. He's been a bit like you know. Anyone got any blockchain ideas? Blockchain evangelist. No, but I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay, so I feel like Roger Ver. Ambassador. <laughs> Roger Ver. <laughs> so I self-described Roger Ver. No, although I do like the idea. Uh, uh, no, so okay, guys. I'm gonna. I tell you what. This week it's gonna be a very fair week. Um, everyone's gonna win. All right, guys. We all get a participation trophy. No one is the clear winner. You all get a smile. Um, it was Federal Reserve of Richmond hires self-described crypto nerd, um, which I think, uh, you know, you all kind yeah. of hit it really um, just in different different ways. Um, so there you go. Anyone playing along at home, if you got all five right, uh, well done. Um, if you can come and find me, I will give you a cookie from the bakery that accepts. So the next bit we have is our open segment where we will be interviewing Riddle on, um, well, generally uh, what he's up to and uh, the cryptocurrency scene in India. Um, so I, I'll kick it off with a question um, and you guys feel free to, to, to pop in with any. Yeah, I guess the, the first question I've got for you, Mridal, um, I'm not going to go into the recent developments right this second uh, that everyone probably knows about by now, but besides those recent developments, until this point where we've had essentially the government being quite anti-crypto or more openly recently anti-crypto, what has the cryptocurrency sin been like in India? Like, you know, how has it been? Like, you know, are you meeting lots of people who use it? How is it online? What's the general vibe like, I guess? And, and what are people doing with crypto in India? Um, well, I mean, talking about the general vibe, I, I know a lot of people in the space, but <laughs> if we're talking in absolutely, you know, um, in layman terms in general, I'd say there is a, there's um, basically the targeted audience is the youth. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we're focused on. And there's a lot of startups. There's a lot of companies that are popping up uh, using blockchain. And there's a lot of crypto projects as well in India. There's exchanges. So overall, it's, it's pretty decent. Um, talking about the crypto acceptance, it's... It's kind of a it's it's been a it's been kind of a roller coaster. So mm -hmm. up until 2018, the government it was unregulated, and then in 2018, um, there was a ban imposed. It was a partial ban, you can say. Basically, banks were not allowed to deal with cryptocurrencies. Bank accounts were getting frozen, and then mm -hmm. it's it's well, everyone you know, it's all it's all food. So they got scared. People tried to liquidate their assets. They got out. And eventually, and so most of the most of the people they exited at, at that point. The ones which were remaining were the hardcore blockchain enthusiasts. Mm. And I've been to a couple of meetups, so I think it's pretty decent. Besides that, but in March 2020, the ban was lifted by the Supreme Court, so there has been a pretty decent surge. I mean, it's about 75% of a surge in the normal transactional volume. Yeah, I mean, because I, I I will move on to the obvious. Uh, yeah, so we've all obviously heard since that lifting in March uh, last year, um, the government appears to be making moves to attempt to ban cryptocurrency purchases right. and sales. And it looks like they're trying to do that to then in order launch their own central bank uh, digital currency, CBDC. Um, I guess, like, how has that affected things? I assume not greatly, but like, it's not, not positive, but how, how much of that effect are you, are you seeing between your friends, yourself and other people uh, with this? Um, the effect is kind of dying out, but you know, when news was coming up, that was absolutely crazy. I mean, there was so much fear. There was so much food, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I mean, people started liquidating their assets to such a level. Um, 
basically, um, when you talk about the conversion rate, one tether is pegged to 72 or 75 if you check on P2P, 75 rupees INR. Mm. At that point in time, it went down to 60. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, that's how much fear there was. Everybody was like, hey, crypto is going to get banned. There's going to be a new bill passed. So they were just trying to, you know, get everything out, liquidate their assets. That was a lot of fear around it. So this bill we're talking about, this was actually proposed somewhere in 20, um, somewhere around 2018. The proposal was to uh, have a complete blanket ban on cryptocurrencies in general. So in that, you won't be allowed to, well, the ban would include holding, trading, mining, or you know, involvement in any kind of cryptocurrencies in general. So uh, that was the proposal. And along with that proposal was that there's going to be a digital uh, token pegged for the INR. Mm. But that was just a proposal. It didn't go through. And now it's the same proposal that is being, you know, uh, brought up in the news. I mean, this was the draft bill. So it was a draft. It wasn't the final draft. It wasn't passed. It was just a draft. And that's where all the fear came in from. So wow. this is... A, yeah, I mean, this is this is exactly why knowing something is more important than just reading half of it. So people yeah. just read half of it. There was, uh, you know, news outlets, they, they need something spicy. <laughs> so yeah, yeah so the, that, that, was the, uh, that was a really spicy news. So if you look at all of those news out, outlets, the, headings, the heading is India is going to ban cryptocurrencies. And then you read through it, they say it's still being mulled over. It's still in the, you know, decision phase. It's still a draft bill. There, we don't even have a final draft till now. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I remember when I um, was doing the News of the Week video about three weeks ago, and I think I was going to put in um, about, because uh, I'd read I'd read some articles on it at the time. I was trying to read up on it at that time. Mm-hmm. And, and I'd read that essentially it was, yeah, it's a draft and no one's really done anything further since, you know what I mean? It's not really actually as serious as people are making out. Um, but I was reluctant to put it in because I, I didn't feel like I was knowledgeable enough. Like I've never been to India, right? I, and I don't, I'm not keeping up with the local news that well. So I didn't want to misunderstand something and get it wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and then since then, I've seen a lot more like doubling down by the media. So I was on the assumption that maybe something had moved forward a bit, but it doesn't sound like it really has, to be honest. It sounds like it's just FUD, really. Um, yeah, we can't, we can't really be sure about it either. So one of the news outlets here, CNBC, um, on 5th February, they reported that the PMO, Finance Ministry, and the Cabinet Secretary, they're all preparing to draft the new bill. And the government is trying to introduce the law, um, basically clearing the ordinance. So, oh. this was, yeah, so this was from undisclosed sources. I mean, we, mm. we don't really know if the sources were official or not. Uh, they just quoted undisclosed sources. So, again, it, it's all just, it's, there's a lot of... Um, There's a lot of uncertainty around it. There's no clarity at all. How's India's leadership justifying this ban when we have other governments that are starting to regulate it? Um, You know, Bank of New York Mellon is now going to do custody. MicroStrategy is buying up huge quantities of Bitcoin. Um, Visa and MasterCard are talking about uh, implementing crypto like as part of their payment platform. PayPal's doing the same thing. Um, it seems like they're mm-hmm. taking a giant step backwards. Like, how are they selling the people on this ban? Right. I mean, regulations in itself are not exactly in backward step, but a complete ban definitely is. So I think the justification pretty much comes around the um, tax evasion part of it. Mm. So because uh, the government does not have details on the crypto holdings of, a, of any person in general and where they're trading in, it, there is a lot of tax evasion and there's a lot of illegal activities as well. So this is used for terror funding as well. I mean, it could be used for terror funding. There'd be no regulation around it. No one knows who's sending it to who, if you're using it for a justified mean or not. And there were a bunch of scams involved. So even when, you know, this, uh, the draft that came around in 2018, that also had the same proposal. This was around the tax evasion, um, terror funding and the scams. So basically, again, it, it boils down to the lack of education of it. Um, if, you don't, uh, if, you, if you don't really know what you're dealing with and you get scammed, there is absolutely no support. You cannot go to the police. You can, I mean, you do not know where to go for that, right? You send, hmm. some, you send money to somebody on the blockchain, you're not getting it back, period. But if, it's, but, you know, if you, there's a bank scam and then you go to the bank, you appeal, you file a form, and then they go through the entire process, you might as well get it back. So that's why they proposed that you need, uh, we need a more centralized system instead of a decentralized one. 
So there was a lack of authority, yeah, a lack of authority, and uh, again, the tax evasion front. What I find interesting about that is like, um, what's the difference between getting scammed out of your Bitcoin and scammed out of your cash, right? Like if someone comes up to you in the street and says, hey, you know, I can sell you the Eiffel Tower or whatever, and, and it's right there. You want to buy that with, you know, 50,000 pounds and I've got 50,000 pounds in my pocket. I'm like, hell yeah, give him 50,000 pounds and off he runs. Who's going to help me? The bank's not going to be able to do anything. Right. Police probably won't be able to do anything. Same thing with the, the Bitcoin, right? Like that guy, I don't know. He's somewhere else and I'm giving him my my currency um difference is there one uh, probably not um, maybe it's probably easier to track the bitcoin because you can at least <laughs> see what wallet you sent it to and at least see what wallets he's sending it to um so yeah i guess like are you under the the camp of okay the government is keen to stop crime and and scams and etc and terror funding i can understand that absolutely um therefore they want to have some more regulation okay yep from their point of view completely understandable um why don't they just catch it at the on and off ramps um so yeah just like america is enhanced ky if they're going to do something that's quite you know anti-freedom i guess why don't they just do enhanced kyc and, and then that's it really i mean you're going to get you're going to catch people either way right say if i go to some someone and say oh you know i sent this guy a million dollars worth of bitcoin and it turns out he's funding terrorism. I don't know, something like that, however that would work. Then the government could just track where that's getting sent um, using uh, I think they have blockchain analysis tools. Um, and then, yeah, okay, well, it went to this wallet and then this guy withdrew it. And, oh, it's this guy who lives here. Here's his, here's his ID. You know what I mean? Do you, are, you, are you of the understanding that that makes sense? I mean, does that make sense to do that? Or, are, or are, do you think I'm missing something that the Indian government's just seen or something? Or a little bit unsure. I mean, I mean, sure. I mean, it, it, you can't, well, to be honest, I think it's much easier for government agencies to track um, the cash flow when it's centralized mm. instead of decentralized. Uh, you, you can use currencies such as Monero. It's, it's pretty much harder to track. True. And yeah, I mean, if you use Monero, it's clearly harder to track than Bitcoin. And with the centralized system, well, I mean, obviously the police, they, they, just, need, they just need approvals. They can get the bank to track it. So uh, it's the same with funding or, or any activities in general. If you want to see what a person is up to, you just follow the cash flow. Mm. Yeah. And no, for, them, it, for, yeah, for them, it's much easier. The reason is um, if you're opening up a bank account, you need to get yourself verified. You need an ID. And then you also need uh, a fan card, which we use for income tax filing. <laughs> so you need both of those to open up a bank account. Now, the amount of the amount of tokens, uh, sorry, the amount of uh, money you have in the bank, well, they can always check it up because your bank is linked to your PAN card, which is in terms with the income tax department. They can check how much funds you have in your bank, which is not something that can be done with a Bitcoin wallet. I mean, you you or me, we can just go right now to a website, create our or create a new wallet, get a new key phrase, create a bunch of them. We can create as many as we want. And diversify that portfolio. I mean, if you have one Bitcoin, you send it over to 100 ones and then you keep moving it around, that's going to be harder to trace. And if you use such as Monero. So yeah, if you are, if I mean, for us, um, well, what blockchain allows is that you and me, we both can see the transactions right now. But for someone uh, with a complete sense of authority, like the police, for them, it's much easier when it's centralized. But I, I get what you're saying, though, in response to that, because obviously, as you say, someone could, for example, OK, say I'm in, in, in India and I'm a dodgy guy who wants to make money off of scamming people. Right. And I've got mm -hmm. this five Bitcoin that I've collated. Um, the government can see that I have sent that Bitcoin to you know the wallet of an exchange and then they can go, aha, we've got him. He's withdrawn it. But if I'm smart enough, I could just for example, use like a swapping tool, decentralized swapping tool online or whatever and swap it into Monero or even a centralized swapping tool, to be honest, because a lot of them don't require any KYC and then swap it into Monero and then take that Monero to the exchange. And then they're going to have a tough time potentially trying to work out that I'm that person, if you get what I mean, because obviously I could just wait for a couple of weeks, withdraw it in Monero in my exchange and they can't prove that I'm the person who had that Bitcoin. Uh, right. So I guess there is that problem. And so it's obviously a lot easier from the government's point of view to just say, yeah, so, we could do all this, but we could just ban it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, regulations aren't bad in general. I mean, what, what we do require is probably a regulation front on it. 
but a complete blanket ban that mm-hmm. would be a huge step backward so you know when you're talking about um sending the money in the bank or so this was an opportunity for people to basically um you know cash out their black money you can say so mm-hmm. if you have a bunch of cash at home all you all you do is you convert it into bitcoin and then hey you don't you don't have any account on but if if you have that cash at home you go deposit it in the bank then the income tax department they have details of your bank account they see oh hey uh, lawrence just deposited 1 million where did that come from where, wish... where did all the cash come from yeah <laughs> Marido, but yeah if if there's a ban like if this actually goes through um do you think that the companies are going to like push back and <laughs> fight it like in court or do you think they're just going to leave india and go elsewhere Yeah so I think it's going to be a, it's it's going to be a decent fight um people are already doing it there's a website set up india wants crypto <laughs> so you can go there sign a petition um it's it's going uh, it's going on right now like i said um it's oh, it's all right it's what we probably need from the government is a bit of regulation on it but not a but not a complete ban so when we talk about it yeah sure centralization is it's all cool but it's all under the government and not everything legal is the best option right i mean a century ago slavery was legal but it wasn't right so yeah i mean if the government is really going to you know um if it's only going to be a regulation that's all right uh exchanges or companies as you said they've, they've agreed to it so was urix has agreed to uh I, well i'm not i'm not going to quote me but i did read in an article that was urix agreed that if uh in the regulation front comes up and the government files a proper petition or so and they file a proper case then the customer details can be shared so mm-hmm. this kind of this kind of an issue uh but you know for other companies who do not want to get involved with that they can be registered outside where the government would have no jurisdiction over there yeah yeah so true. most of the crypto projects actually do that i mean they do register from outside i suppose a lot of people um as well like in other countries don't realize the uh, like the government can often for example you know um i believe england uh i know new zealand i know brazil um just from personal experience like those governments can just say to a cryptocurrency company you will be re- you know we we need this information from you and they kind yeah. of pretty much have to give it up already so the fact that Wazarex is going to comply isn't really a shock um to be honest um i guess i've got i've got one more question i want to ask you <clears throat> just kind of to pull it away from um the regulation side of things into into something else um but i guess when it comes to bitcoin and crypto like something i always find interesting when talking to someone is just like how did you get involved in the space in the first place like how did you find it and like how has it changed things for you i guess like i always find that a, an interesting thing to ask someone to see how everyone has seems to have different answers which surprises me so like how did you get into it right so this was back in college sometime and i mean this is the this was the uh this is the wave of 2014 or somewhere when you know bitcoin was on the rise and then uh basically i heard it from a friend and then he's like hey i invested in bitcoin i was like all right what the hell is that <laughs> and then he's like i'm not i'm not sure either but you know it's going up i already made this much profit i was like okay and <laughs> then you know and then and then being a computer science student i was like okay if i'm going to invest i'm 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 pretty i'm pretty skeptic guy so mm. i don't invest in general i mean I went on I was like okay blockchain that's when I was introduced to it I read up on it and then I was like okay this is pretty decent and that was the pump wave you know when bitcoin went from like 3000 to 20000 dollars mm. so that's that's probably when I got involved into it and after that it was all about okay um I'm going to hold on to it for a while and uh, that's where I started reading up okay so this is blockchain and all of that and I yeah I mean it did influence me quite a bit i was like hey i want to change my final year computer and my college project to something related to blockchain uh, let's try creating a token based on it uh, nice okay so yeah that, that that came up and yeah it was pretty decent after that but i think the still issue was the usage aspect of it i did ho- i i mean i had crypto at that point in time it was going up and down trading was all right but the issue was the um acceptability the, mm. like like i said there's not a lot you know this brings back to the first question we had the first news piece there's not a lot of businesses that accept bitcoin in general in the country 
So um, again, it's it's skeptic. I mean, there's a regulationary front, then it, there's a lack of knowledge, and there's the volatility. Hmm. So for a, for a businessman, I mean, you're sitting on a shop, you you don't really have time to check the price every time, and then unless you have a gateway that has integrated and is regulatory. So I mean, you accept Bitcoin in the starting of the day. By the end of the day, it falls down. You lose how you lose half of your income. Come on. <laughs> mm. yeah that's true or, or or it could be double i mean yeah so that's why you need a gateway and well regulationary aspects are there well, at least in india at least right now so well yeah this does this does bring us to victor phil <laughs> yeah yeah it does neatly do that actually because that, that's that's kind of yeah i i um yeah I, that's why i found that's... i was you know i was in england and you can't you can't buy anything either you know um so it was like i couldn't do anything so yeah so when i actually came across big Phil was the same time around when the crypto ban was coming up mm. so when we were talking about the 20, 2018 ban i was like um okay i have 90 days to liquidate my assets <laughs> so i was like Okay, what services do except Bitcoin? And I was like, all right, so there's Bitrefill. So the first thing I bought was an Amazon voucher. I, mm. It worked out flawlessly and I was like, this is good. <laughs> I went to the website, hey, okay, there's a careers page and they need an ambassador. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Job done, yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah, I am. Um, I think like I can't remember. I think my first purchase was like an Amazon, like a small Amazon voucher or something. But the first one I remember was like buying because it was like the first thing that made me go, "Wow!" Like I bought like I think Spyro on Nintendo Switch through Argos or something because like a retailer here with, with it, and I was like, "Whoa!" I could like, and I, I think I used like I, I paid with like the, all the Lightning I had, which was like twenty pounds or something. So I paid mainly through um, crypto, and then like five pound through PayPal or something. <laughs> it was just like really strange like combination, but. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's cool to like hear, because I say, everyone seems to have a different story. And then from your side of it, it was just like, you know, hearing money's being made and then I'm going to research this because I'm, I'm often skeptic. It's, same here, like I'm skeptical as hell. Like, I remember when I first got into the gym when I was younger and it was like, I researched it to the point where I knew like the name of every steroid and I wasn't even going to think of taking any, but I still knew it and I knew every side effect just in case someone tried yep. to offer me or whatever. You know, I just, I'm that kind of guy as well. Um, so it's kind of funny. So here we go. Uh, I've got 60 seconds of good news for everyone. So you can uh, be left on a lovely positive note. Um, so a Tex-Mex restaurant owner has spent $2,000 of his own money to promote his competitors' businesses who are struggling during the COVID pandemic. 10 years ahead of schedule, the world's first carbon neutral shipping liner looks set to launch in 2023. A New Zealand designer has made a solar-powered skylight that also desalinates water, making it suitable for drinking. During Texas's recent storm, for the second time in history, a furniture store owner has offered his store as a safe shelter for those stuck outside. Processors in wearable technology like Fitbits could soon be replaced by mushroom mycelium. Volunteers in Texas saved thousands of sea turtles from the extreme cold during the recent storms. Low-income housing has been created in Colombia by using only coffee waste. An Australian company has made a hydrogen battery which can power a house for up to three days on a charge, is recyclable, and is not a fire risk. And finally, a 70-year-old grandma has become grandma, sorry, grandpa has become the oldest man to row across the Atlantic, and in doing so has raised over $1.4 million for Alzheimer's charities. Which I thought was awesome. Good on you, whoever that grandpa is out there, you're the man. All right. I'm gonna give you a shout out to that guy. Definitely. yeah thank you uh everyone for listening in we've really appreciated it and thank you riddle for coming on it's been awesome uh, honestly I, i've really appreciated the knowledge that you've brought with you um about this uh regulation that you taught me a thing or two that's for certain i mean i i didn't quite know how far things were going with that so you've kind of stomped the fud out for me um and yeah i hope that anyone listening has really yeah. gained some some good insight from that um so yeah i appreciate you coming on it'd be awesome to have you again in the future um, maybe we can get an update on the, the situation actually in a couple of months uh, but yeah thank you and thanks jerry thanks um thanks for taking time out to join me and you ricardo um so to everyone out there um have a great rest of your week um whether it's the start or the end have a great next week and uh buy bitcoin